Commissioners of the Harvard Electric Department is meeting on Monday, August 16th at the Harvard Municipal Building. It is 5.06 p.m. Commissioners Prigo, Smith, Ambrosino, and Gedenkin are present, as is General Manager Sullivan and Christopher Goulet from AM. Okay. Hey? I, I, I knew it was one of the two, and I figured I'd pick one. Um, and a gentleman from Harvard Television. Um, are there any modifications? You can't hear. <laughs> Sorry. Just hitting me? Oh, it's hitting me, yeah. That's not going to help Mike. I think that's going to mess up my recording, so. Yeah. No, it's going to pick up too much fan and not enough of your voices. Yeah. It's working. Don't mess up with that. Um, one, one question on the agenda. I didn't see any minutes in here, so. Yeah, I sent you out an email at like four saying, oops, I'm reviewing my folder and I just saw it in the video. Oh, I didn't. I, so. I haven't seen the email. Uh, so I think we'll have to park that for the next yeah. meeting, though. I think, Mike, if you can post them That's as draft right. minutes so that we have them up, and if we need to change them, we'll change them. Yep. Um, and actually, I'm gonna, you're, you're going to need to take a good look at them because the whoever ran the recording the last, I don't know, five minutes of the meeting or so, it's, it's on and off. And yeah. I guess my best, so you're going to have to fill in a couple. Trust me. Okay. Um, you're asking a bunch of us all <laughs> to attend them. We need to remember what we did in a particular time. You're not surprised, but it was like, it was very chopped up. Hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, I think since there is no one from the public, unless. Is it Jim? Yeah. Oh, gosh. I can't. Okay. Let's do this so we can watch this. Um, the floor is yours, Christopher. Thank you for coming. Okay. Oh, you're welcome. It's a nice day to drive over from St. Allen all the way over here. And yep. I want to go ahead and catch my sister on the My sister was just my daughter over in New Hampshire. She's on her way back from New Hampshire and I thought we might cross paths. But we did. Anyways, how, how detailed do you want me to get? Do the first presentation of the financials. I mean, we must get what? monthly. We get monthly. We get monthly reports. Yeah. So yeah. they will. They will ask you questions. If yeah. You, if you do a shallow dive, they'll take you deeper. Okay. Uh, do you want me to go through both reports? Just. I. I. I I'm. What I would like, uh, and, and and I and I will say I have, you know, we got these on late Friday, right. and I have not had a chance to, to look at them in any great detail. Though I saw that there were some recommendations that you made. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how others feel, but yeah, I, would I think like it's, to hear it's really the findings, your what, top what sheets. What the findings are and, and, um, and, any, and if there are any things that we need to be taking a look at or things that, that in the financials themselves that you think warrant you know, our attention, then I think yeah. those are the things that would uh, be helpful. I'll, I'll, I'll go through the financials first, and okay. go through what basic adjustments we kind of made to the, okay. you know, I think we did make uh, like 17 adjustments in 2019 and 18, 2020. Uh, probably half of those pertain to the, the pension, the right. required pension yeah. adjustments yeah. that the state is in. You got to make eight or nine adjustments just and this is for the year ending 2019. First. Okay. So basically, we look at uh, page three and four. This is our auditor's report. Okay. This is the opinion page. We give you a clean opinion. My things are marked with yeah, letters. Which, right here. which letter are we looking at? A, B, C, D, E. Okay. Okay, this will be D. This will be uh, 
comparative financial statements for 2019 and 2018. Okay, now I have two documents that have the same cover page. Our financial statements for December 21, 21, 31, 2020, and 2019. Maybe, maybe they're different after the first page, but they're the same on the first page. Well, D is what he wants now. Yeah, but my D and E are, yeah, looking, the same. Are, are looking the same, at least yeah, on the cover page. Yep. Yeah, same. Uh, I get into yeah, the statement. 20, 20, 20, yeah, I have 2020. I have two copies of the same thing. Yeah, mine is 2020. Yeah, I have no 2018. I have no 2018. I don't have a 2019, 2018. I have right. two 2020, yeah. 2020. Yeah. Yes, I know. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Repetition one. I have both copies of the other or whatever you want to do. Yep. All right. I can go. Yeah, I mean, the findings aren't necessarily number-based. If we're going through the statements, it's, it helps to have them in front of us. Right. But, but, the, but the, the findings... Do you want to start with 20 and 19, and then you want to copy the 19 and 18? I don't want to do whatever. Yeah. Here's 19. I can go over 20, 20, 20, 19. That would be great. There's a much difference between the two. Anyways, okay. pretty much, pretty much the same as their own entries. Yeah. Basically, basically we've got page one and two. Basically, our uh, independent auditor's report discusses the financial statements that we're issuing. And on page two, it gives us usually our, our opinion on the financial statements. We didn't do. It's well, called the management discussion. What would be really helpful if, if you have something from a, another similar utility or something like that that isn't privileged that you could, you could share that with right. us? Well, what we can do is I can send you samples. Yeah. Guide, have guidelines of what's, what's supposed to be in. That would be very helpful. You know, and then at the end they just have a summary of what they expect that is going to happen in the future also. The next, you know. Next year. Okay. But it's something that, yes, it is required, but a lot of municipalities that I do, they, they don't report on it either. So, yeah. yeah, well, this is, this is uh, I think what? this is the first time we've heard about yeah. this. Yeah. So. Is it for, yeah. it, for municipal reports, are required to have supplementary information plus a management discussion and analysis. But but it, but required but I think the question is it's, it's required but they don't do it. Who, who, kind of who requires it? Who requires it? Uh, the government accounting standards for it. That was okay. For, for auditing purposes and accounting okay. purposes. Huh. Okay. And then as part of that we have the uh, other reporting required by government auditing standards. Be that interim control report is required by government you know, auditing standards. Okay, and and you can and what exactly is an internal control report? It's the same that we review your system of controls and from what we found there are there may be some material weaknesses or significant deficiencies. Some of them are just in governmental reports. Technically, the client is required to 
produce stuff and your statements and we review it and report on it. That never happens. Never happens any place or never happens? Rarely. Rare, rare, rare. I've had, maybe I've had one, in all my years, I've had one municipal client do the financial statements themselves. It rarely happens. Well, they, they, the standards say that there should be, if they're, if they're not able to produce the report themselves, then it's a because if you want to it's sit, a, you can sit. Weakness. You know, you know, we're pretty informal. You don't, you don't need to stand for us. <laughs> you know, if you want to I, I sit all day anyways. You know, <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I got a stand up desk, but I haven't used a stand up if desk you, in about a year. If you want to stand, you're welcome to. I, I just want, you know. Well, that's all right. Um, I'm, I'm fine. So I'm using my presenter. So you're telling us that we should do various things we haven't heard before. So, you know, be clear in your report what we need to do or give us a sample. Well, of I can give you a sample of that uh, okay. discussion and analysis. This, Show you what it looks like. Basically, just summarizing some of the, you know, your fixed assets, your debt, you know, and then comparative one year to the next. I mean, we um, do so look at the report on it, but they, 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 want, they, they want that also addressed by the management. Well, we do address, I mean, we look at debt and stuff. Right. So it's but, not. But I guess, I guess one of the questions that I have is. Who is this government accounting standard? Well, well, if if, that, if that, none of the municipalities do this. Well, there are a lot that do it, but in the small state of Vermont, not many of them. So in other words, this is this is stuff that's set up for bigger entities, really. Big, bigger right? entities. The way it's going now is even the bigger entities, they don't do it, but they, they'll contract out with a independent accountant mm -hmm. to do it, and then they have a separate independent auditor audit the information, but they have a, they have, they'll hire separate accountants or auditors to do the accounting assistance and financial statements. Well, but that's clear as mud. But you, you weren't <laughs> presented any financial statements at all? Because we see monthly financial well, statements. Well, you monthly financial statements, but what I'm talking about is the financial statement. No, like no, no, I understand that. So, so in other words, you weren't given anything that aggregated into an annual statement, the, the monthly statements. No, no. Because, I mean, that shouldn't be a particularly difficult thing no, to do. No, I think it's just adding words to the numbers. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, that's the only thing that I say we're admitting is the management discussion and analysis. I can show you what a sample of it is. And that, basically, that goal right after this would be the management discussion and analysis. OK. The goal right in there. Uh, anyway, so on page three is the statement of net position, mm -hmm. the asset portion of it. And that's pretty much been the same for the, for the past few years. You got your cash, your accounts achievement, that your allowance, your bad debts, your unbuilt revenue, inventory. If you look at that, those are all been pretty reasonable compared to prior years, except for you can see where the cash went up significantly. That's because if you go down below on the restricted cash, that went from 296,000 to zero because no longer that cash is no longer restricted. That was the cash that was held that corresponds to one of the loans. Once that loan was that loan was paid off in 2019, once that loan was paid off, that freed up all that restricted cash. So that got moved up to unrestricted cash. You got your investments, property equipment, changes, and construction work in progress. And then you have the deferred outflows of resources is the, the pension, those pension adjustments that we have to make for Vermont <coughs> employees retirement system. And that's been yes, significant change, significant changes and significant and I, I I'll show you in 2019 where I did make a small change in, in 2019 because that technically the reports that the state sends out are on the fiscal year end oh, yeah. and you're on the calendar year end. So basically we got to take those reports and back out six months worth of your Jeez. expenses paid to get it to agree with the state's reports. Right. And the prior auditor went back out the six months. I, I don't know if he backed out the 12 months, but it's 
cross between the periods. It's a continual it's hassle for us. It's, it's not easy to account for. Am I, my recollection is that we have that we're on a calendar year basis because of the PUC. Yeah. Um, and, and that's part of the state, so it's kind of. We don't have any. We have to. No, because the town is on is on um, uh, is on July, July. On fiscal year also, and our being part of the town but on a different fiscal year <laughs> sometimes has raised issues for the town. We just yeah. went through a discussion about this, and Mike came back and said, "No, we have to be we, on." The we have to year do it this way because because of the PUC, and it just seems odd. <laughs> yes, to say the least. So on page four is the. The liability side of the statement of position, mm -hmm. you can see where that's pretty much reasonable from 2019 to 2020. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, and the debt's obviously going down. I don't believe there's any new debt. I think you're, the, net, the one thing that's going way up is that net, net pension liability, which is yeah, tremendous. Yeah. Well, and, and the cause of that was? Why the pension? Is this a new state requirement for the pension? Is that why it's still happening? It's a, it's a new governmental accounting standards requirement that they want. People are aware, you know, municipalities and towns and they're aware of what's actually out there for a possible liability. Yeah, well, so I mean, we... So the pension went up from 19 to 20? Would be I don't think the pension did. I mean, it's just... Well, the pension liability went up by, by 130,000. 130, yeah, I mean, that's a, because we have to designate it as such. I mean, right. the, the pensions didn't all of a sudden increase. No. no. So it's a change in, in the way it was accounted for between 19 yeah, and 20? Yeah, they got actuaries that come in and try to calculate where sure. everything is at, is at, and it changes from year to year. And so it could drop. It, it, it could it could drop, and look, if, if but the we, market value of investments starting to if it starts to turn, you know, but it's not, I don't know how much it's going to drop that much because they're they're so underfunded right now that it might just get it to yeah. It's, 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 just, it's just it's just curious. I mean, we we haven't had any major personnel changes that would have. No, the, no, just the, I mean, the pension didn't go up. It's just the way you reported or yeah. you, you hold the money. Actual number that we give, today was end day of whatever of HEV. This is what our exposure is at 236,000. No, I think I, th I think it's if, if it is this is this is that that's the asset part of it. That's that that's what's the, the net the net would be the difference between the 550 and the 236. Oh, this is the asset. That's the asset side. Okay. You know, are our people not keeping the records that you would like to have on this? Is the liability even worse? <laughs> These yeah, numbers are all obtained from the state's reports. So the liability is actually it's more than plus. 550. That, that it, the, it's the 550 plus the 236. No, no, that's the no, 236. That's, 236. that's an asset. That's an asset. That's, that's an asset, right? right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Where do we have that? <laughs> it's somewhere. And then uh, under net position, we have net investment and capital assets, which is basically your, your total capital assets plus your debt pertaining to those capital assets. That's going to be your net investment and capital assets. You no longer have any restricted funds, so everything else is unrestricted. So it's showing an unrestricted. Uh, net position of two million nine seventy five one forty three. So to go back to, to to Michael's question though, on this net pension liability, what what is the liability? What is what what does that represent? Uh, when might we have to pay that out? Under what circumstances? Under the the circumstance if. You have a person that has retired and they're allowed that pension based on that and the pension funds aren't there 
maybe come back to you and tell you that. So this this is this is the risk of an unfunded right of of, of an unfunded pension system. Unfunded pension system, and where okay. they they change well some of the required contributions change year to year based on this. Some of them are staying the same, but some of them are going up to like the employer portion is 12 percent now. Five years ago, it might have been eight percent. Right. So it, it, you are you are paying additional each year when they they roll up. But it be, could be where one of these years they may want to catch up even more and maybe really have to. But by doing that, that should bring it down. All other things being equal, all things being equal, it should bring it down. Is you're going to be paying it more. And more. Five fifty would stay the same, using that moment, but our asset would go up if we pay more. We still owe what we owe. We just have more money. I don't know where this two hundred and thirty-six thousand dollars is. Well, so why does it say net? That, that, well, most of that the state has too. Is their portion of just the way the formula works out. And also, mm -hmm. I like I said, I this, I I have to defer six months that you paid. The last six months that you paid in contributions that's included in that two hundred thirty-six thousand dollars. Not not at all. And that shows up on page 21. So I'm kind of sliding in here halfway through your discussion. Though. I think this point that we're talking about is the exact reason why pensions were all but eliminated in the workplace because of the liability of care, technically. Now, our pension fund, the Beamer's fund, is well funded. Is all what? It's well funded the municipal employees. Now, if you go to the, the state pension fund that includes the teachers and stuff, that's way underfunded. And there's huge liabilities going on with that. I mean, can you, I'm sure you've read in the newspaper how bad it is with the uh, state budget because of it. But we don't have that, those problems with our plan, I just share that. It's not clear to me what we're not doing. I mean, I mean, we know we have to pay for pensions, and it's in the budget every year. So, I mean, what's the problem? As I don't figure out here. It, it's it's a measure of. There have been cities that have gone bankrupt, right? Because the pension system collapsed. I understand. And the municipal employees were entitled to right. money that wasn't there. But we're not having that problem. We're not having that problem, first of all, because we're not a, we're part of a municipality, but we are not the municipality. We don't raise money through taxes. We're, 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 we're selling a product, so that puts, so we're in a different. But this, this pension liability, if you go to page 26, show the schedule of the district's proportionate share of the pension liability. What, what, is, what is the district? I don't have a page. That actually is the department. West page. I, I, uh, West page. This is going to be, I got a couple, some corrections when I was looking at okay, this. Okay, so that should be so the, the department. So it's going to be departments. Okay, so department. that's us. Yeah, so then wherever it says the district, it's going to be department. And if you go under one, the fourth line, the fourth item down, it says it's the department's portion of the net pension liability as a percentage of covered employee payroll. I can go actually next one down. The plan fiduciary net position as a percentage of the total pension liability is 74%. That means it's only 74% funded right now. Yeah. So if you had everyone decide to retire all at once and they want their retirement contribution, their, 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 their pension. But everybody doesn't retire. No, no, it doesn't, but it's saying that. That, that pension liability that could be what you potentially could be liable to pay. No, we're not going to yeah. pay for everybody else. I mean, I, 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 I don't. No, no, no. It's your. It, that's no. that's your employee's portion of the pension. Okay. Okay. That's your employee's portion of that pension liability. But we have income coming in. We have a budget, and I still don't really see the big problem, but. Well, we, we hope it's not a big problem, but it has been a problem in some other states. And that's why they wanted to start making this a requirement to be re 
reported because it opened up everybody's eyes. It's like, oh, there could be a potential. Yeah, but who, who the, the is the Chris? That's the government. The government <laughs> found the scanner report. So I, I, they asked me that before my year were gone. Well, the, re the, reason, the, the reason for the question, Mike, was, was that Christopher had said that, that certain things that we haven't done, certain reports that we haven't made, yeah. were required. And we said, required by who? And he said, the Government yeah. Accounting Standards Board. And apparently, we are not alone in not doing these, that it's that small entities typically have not been doing yeah, Well, I mentioned in the audit report, we indicate that they've included some required supplementary information, but another part of it was that management discussions and analysis, which I didn't ask you to present that. It wasn't in the prior audit reports. Mm -hmm. But if it's something that you think you can do going forward, I, I told them I can send you a sample of what sure. a management discussion analysis could look like. And it's, you know, it's pretty much a canned format. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't take that long to do that. That would take out this ominous out of the audit report. So. Yeah, we're, we're all about. You know, whatever you recommend, we we want to. It, it like and like I said, I sometimes we can set up templates for you to do some of the Good. various things. Great. Good. You just have to do the, the written portion of yep. it. Yep. That would be very helpful. So I have two quick questions. Is there anybody on the pension there? I assume there are some people on pension. We're receiving pension benefits right yeah. now. Sure. Yeah. So they get a check, which comes from Veemers. From Veemers. So this yeah. asset is money being held by Veemers. We don't have this two right. no, 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 you don't have to do the 36. But you, somebody has it. Yeah, and right now you don't technically owe this 550, but if they end up being short and they could come back and say, well, I can't pay this person's okay. pension, but. Right, so the yeah. issue is, I mean, it, with the employee is a, it's a guaranteed defined yep. pension benefit. So right. somebody's going to pay. Yep. And if the plan doesn't pay, we're, we're holding back. The, yeah, it, so it's, it, it, we're taking the risk of Beamers performing the way that Beamers right. is mm -hmm. supposed to perform. And, and, they, and they, they do have a 401k type uh, retirement plan too that they yeah. can the contribute yeah. to a part of. But we aren't in that. We're not a participant in that. But our 401k is through another entity. Right. Uh, our page five is the statements of revenues, expenses, and changes in that position. That's all. Revenue was down just a little bit compared to prior year. Okay, um, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sales, we had a pile of them, and uh, so many that we couldn't use them within the allotted time frame that you get. So we ended up selling them to other vets and members. That was one big one. And I also uh, sold a bunch of scrap copper. Uh, that was yeah, thirty yeah, thousand dollars. Those are in the bell. Yeah. And then operating expenses overall pretty reasonable the prior year. Changes. The operating income 2019 to 157, 558, 2020, 365, 373. And the non operating revenues expenses, which are all the dividend income is probably about the same, interesting is down a little bit, quite a bit. And then Gold investment income was pretty much the same. And the LCSF settlement income that was just that ended in 2019. I didn't see anything in 2019. What's this one about? The LCSF settlement income. LCSF. It's not ringing a bell. It's not ringing a bell for me either. How much was it? 122,000 in the prior years. 
LCSF settlement income. It, I think it's part of the the power, the power invoice. Was this was there something was there some kind of a grid it settlement? Was that, uh, the ordinary, no. I don't remember. Don't it, it was, but I'll, I'll, it's, it's part it's part of that uh, the power invoices uh, the UPS power invoices in, in 2020. There was no nothing on this LCF. Uh, Okay. Anyway, money we received then. Good. Do you have any other questions on the number parts of it? No, no. I don't. I don't know if anybody else does. But I mean, under, these, under, these we've been looking at every month. So yeah, under good. the footnote disclosures, everything's pretty similar to the prior years and all that. The investment footnote on note 12 compared to different investment types. And pretty much all the same stuff for the transfer LLC number one keeps going up in value. Uh, the note four is property equipment, the additions and retirements, as well as the depreciation on all the equipment. Five the long term debt. Let's we'll see where the the bucket truck you know, was paid off in 2019, so no longer have. Or actually paid off in 2020, so no longer have any balance on that. Now. And we went from 727,425 in long term you notes know, payable to 575,852. Is these old notes are relatively high interest rates? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. You know, high interest rates. Um, you get nothing from them. Right? Which one? Yeah. Well, that they're all they originally were high interest rates, but you see where they're refunding. They're refunding bonds, to reduce the rates on two, the 2008. That was these were I've never disclosed in prior years because they said they had refunding of. All those notes to reduce the interest rate and you receive four and a half percent. That was not disclosed in the prior audit, the 2018 audit report. But you can see in well, the but that just savings against the interest that we would have paid, or is that is that a credit to us? It, it's it's basically it significantly reduced the interest that was over the end of getting a. Well, that's not that's Christopher, is that the format you, you when you can, see, you can see on page 15? Yeah, at the bottom right, you have a column called savings, savings, and you net yeah, that's basically your interest savings that was incurred on the refunding bonds. So, for us to approximate the interest rate, we net that out of the interest column and take the, the remainder, right? So, that's, that's the interest savings over the that you that you have remaining on the outstanding debt, basically. So over the, even just in the last five or six years, you're going to have like two thousand dollars in savings by doing that refund. Well, it, it's it, but it's when you say savings, it's savings against the higher interest rate. It's not. It's better than not. It's better than not getting it. But it's like when I would no, go I shopping as a kid, and I would come home with what I bought and tell my father how much money I'd saved him. <laughs> sure. um, it's because, like an because, avoided cost, not a saving. Avoid, well, avoided, avoided well, cost. Well, but, but I guess the analysis that I would be interested in seeing is what, with the savings, the, the imputed interest. interest rate is on the debt because yeah. if it's something if it's still three and a half or four percent well and well, one of them I mean, the back again. Two, two to five percent compared to right well five percent is right. a lot higher than the, the what you can borrow in the market their, uh, their immunization schedule does show a blended imputed rate on the ones that they that you can hear from the state so are, are you I, talking I, about the, bond, the 2008 bond? The 2008 bond, yes. That's yeah. the only bond we have left, and it pays off when? Well, you got 2004. We have 2004, 2004 bond, too. That's a lot. 
There's a 2004 so bond. The system rebuilt. 2008 yeah. was the generator rebuilt. Yeah, and the 2004 is even bigger. Yeah. Um, and again, it talks about interest savings, but I, I, I think it's worth seeing what the imputed interest rates are. Sure. We still have low interest rates, and we should be looking at refinancing that debt. This is some fo these are some of the disclosures that were on prior 2018 offers. So I got those to show that interest savings. Or Lynn, or which one of these? Or prepaying, or pre depending on our needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah just exactly. But I mean, we need to be looking at yeah. something. Yep. Yeah. I and mean, one of the things when we get to the current stuff, we <coughs> have huge cash. We want to pay what? Right. 15. You have the money for this thing now. The H. 15. These balances are 2019. Well, the one above is 2020, and it's a comparative report. So if you look at yeah, oh, beginning balance. So that's the beginning of 2020. Yeah. Oh, ending balance. Okay, 375. Right. So 575,000. So he paid off 80,000 in the 2004 debt. Yeah. It was 80,000. They just increased it. It was $80,000 principal in prior years, and they just increased it. The expense increased to 85,000 now. They paid down on the debt. So, so, so the, the amount of principal that we have to repay is going up? No. Or it went up? Well, well it went up based on the amortization schedule for those. Yeah. Bonds. Yeah, without seeing the amortization schedule. So it's, it's, it's back end loaded? Yeah, they start off with smaller yeah. principal amounts, a little bit more interest. In that. So, so it's like a mortgage based amortization? Yeah. So yeah it's a variable. The page 16 and 17 and 18 are just the your uh, amount public power supply required disclosures that they require. They basically send us the exact information that they want and they put into the report. Page, the bottom page 17, I pretty much shows you the, the megawatt hours percentage of each resource. Over the course of the year, the year ended 2020. Seabrook 35% still. So PUC rules 4.1 and 4.3 are the solar? Is Excuse me, I was reading the previous yeah. page. Yeah. Page, page 17, Mike. 17, PUC rule 4.1 and 4.3, those, those, are, those are net metering and... Uh, From Massachusetts. And, and well, well it's, it's discussing right above two. They have to the 4.1 Oh, I'm sorry, it's up there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a small That's hydro. small hydro, and the other one's this. And the other's a PPF. Yeah. Yeah, so these are the IPP projects. The IPP the stuff, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. So net metering doesn't show up in here. No. And our IPP, for, you know, statewide, our percentage of that is almost nothing. Yeah, no, no, I knew that. You can see that. There you go, yeah, 0.6%. Uh, next page, page 18 is discussing the the pension plans and the 401k salary deferral plan. And there's a lot of, I mean, it adds about eight to nine pages to our footnote disclosures and having to change it every year and update them. And
And if you look on page 21, I do have a correction on the, the small paragraph right at the end where it says 130, 100. It really should be 95, 647 was the 2019 pension expense. That last paragraph? Yeah. Where it says For the department year. recognizes the pension expense of 130, 100. That's, that's, I was actually. If you look up above, 2020 has 130, 100, so I kind of, I had a linking it, I never changed the oh, it's, oh, it's, the link. Oh, it's the bottom, it's not the bottom. <coughs> the bottom, the top one is correct. Okay. Yeah. I had it wrong. And the bottom oh, one right. should be 95, 647. If you look at the deferred outfalls and deferred infalls of resources, it'll tell you where their differences are coming to come up with those numbers. Like 49,000 of it. Is the difference between the expected and the actual experience rating that they calculated? So pension expense is, I mean, is that what we put into the system, or is that what our people, our retirees, received? It's part of this calculation for what this this uh, actuary is telling you about. They're paying out for pension expense, and then it's also your portion that you're <laughs> contributing on behalf of the employees. Well, it's not a problem. Yeah, I can read this stuff. I know. It's, uh, it's a lot of that. You okay if I circle us Yep. So back to the refinancing. Yep. I'm still looking at these loans. And at the end of 2020, <clears throat> we're, we're so far into these that aren't we just pretty much paying principal? I mean, if you look at how these numbers are defining, it's almost all the principal. Well, you can see what you're paying for net interest is going to be the difference between the interest and the savings. Okay, so walk me through one of these lines. You've gone page 15. Yes, sir. So the, the, the difference between the interest and the savings is the net interest case that you're paying. So you're paying 22000 in interest in 2021. In 2022, you're going to be paying... 16,000. Uh, walk me through one line of this. So for example, the, 2000, the first line up there, 2004 general obligation bond. Yeah. So if we started with 460 and we paid off 85,000, so that's telling me? Yeah. And my ending balance was 375, then almost everything I paid went to principal. Yeah, but it's an interest rate. I mean, I'm just, as long as we're back on this. Yeah, yeah. We, in 2021, it's got 28000 in interest. Okay. Is that with or without the savings? That's, that's without. without. That's without. So, so we had 22000 And yeah. And the outstanding pr principal on that loan is... Well, if that, this is all the loans combined. Okay. This, this would be all the loans combined. Oh, okay, so it's all the loans combined. Total interest okay. then was twenty two thousand for the year. But that whole okay, but the whole but the whole thing then is twenty two thousand on debt of seven hundred and uh, no, five hundred and seventy five thousand. Well there was seven hundred and thirty and three hundred and twelve. So yeah, so you got five seventy five okay. and you got twenty two thousand in interest. Well compared to what we're earning in the bank, it's a lot. <laughs> so give me again, it's twenty two thousand. Uh, uh, so five seventy five. Five seventy five. Yeah, but it's that's three point eight percent. Yeah. Isn't the three point eight? Three point eight. So it's it. Yeah, it it's higher than if you went to the market, but I wonder. But yeah, but they have to read the arbitrage in there. Yeah, but that's the number that I was trying to get at. Yeah. Based on five seventy five. Yeah. Okay. So the twenty two. So, Mike, the, yes, the, if I did my arithmetic right on my iPhone, it's so there's no guarantee that yeah. I did it right. It's 3.8 percent okay, interest. So, yeah, so that then the question is, um, okay. how much better? How much better? And how much is that worth in real whole right. dollars? And then how much effort and cost? But I think it's it's worth asking the question. Absolutely. Well, because that, yeah. that's aggregated. That's including the 2.4% loan from Union Bank. Oh, that's yeah. a total. That's so that's I think you have to total. do these individually. Yeah, yeah, I think you do. I think you have to. I'm glad we went back because I was. All the interest. 
Because you're right, you take 20 years of almost 20 years of the first one. There may not be much interest left, right. but the other one's going to be a lot of. Well, and the, and the first, yeah, the first one. It's really the second one. Because right. the first one is 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 it, it is going to be paid off in in in, in a two and a half years, less than two and a half years. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the third one is is fine. Yeah. It's the second one. one. And it's not on that much money, but it, it just. Yeah, the third one, the substation transformers have you know thirty-five plus year life, and I took out a ten-year loan. So they're going to be way ahead of the game. Yeah. Well, that. Yeah. We can t that's I think a topic for another meeting. Sure, sure. What, yeah. what our what our borrowing strategy is. is. Yeah, if our cash looks good, pay off a little bit more. Well, no. If we're financing something that has a 35-year life with a 10-year note, that's fairly short financing for a very long-lived yeah, asset. One point five percent. Yeah. Let's say yeah. No, it's a it's a. That's fine. It's a good break. And on page 25, I disclose some contingencies that were part of some, you know, I did the, the dispute that you had with the, the school district. That ended, huh? they ended up. School district? All public record, you can speak to it. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's done. Yeah. It's all done in the document. You have no liability pertaining to it, so you would be receiving that. And then the risk and uncertainty were when the COVID hit, we're required to disclose that. Mm -hmm. It was definitely a big issue and it could possibly cause some economic hardships and financial impacts. You know, luckily for yeah. the Harvard Electric Department, it wasn't as drastic as a lot of other entities. You didn't receive any grants or no. funding or no, didn't we didn't the the first two rounds we were gonna have to all the units. Then the subsequent event that I disclosed was we finally got yeah. a settlement with the prior auditors, prior, prior, prior auditors, which was a significant sum, so we to disclose that. Pension contribution disclosures. So, so, so pretty much 2019 it is on this report. Okay. It is pretty much the same footnote disclosures other than I added the subsequent event for that settlement, which I can I can I will add it to the 2019 one also since I haven't actually finalized in 2019. So I will add uh, that footnote disclosure to 2019 also. I can go over the what you guys is number letter A, mm -hmm. the independent auditor and report interim control. Basically we don't do a in-depth interim control testing, but we do have them have you guys give us a summary of what your controls are for each transactional flow, cash fees, cash disbursements, payroll, debt payments, investments, and so based on what we're told is your controls, we'll basically take one transaction from each area and walk it through the system to see if the controls are in place. If they are, we'll go confident with it. If they're not, we, we won't test anymore. There are, there are controls in place. There are people reviewing this. The people, you know, what, we're, what you want is an independent person other than the, who's writing the check. Doing the nice independent flow. And you have, you have enough employees where you do have that. There's some towns where we have 
the town clerk is the person that does everything. So there's obviously no control. We just write up a big amount, big write up that there is no controls through the system other than the select board approving the payments. And with this one, we one thing we write up is the financial reporting that we the departments want us should be preparing the financial statements and then but what you said before. I mentioned it before, that's really done. So it's just a, a, a standard write up. And most most of the responses is we rely on our auditors to prepare to present the financial statement, prepare the financial statements. So that we, we do give it for for them for someone to review we, a lot of times they'll give them a copy of the footnote disclosure checklist. So if they, if they want to go through that and see, make sure that everything's put in on it. So this is just basically a standard one for people that, for departments that are preparing their own financial statements. But this is, this is a case where we could, if we don't have the capability of doing it in-house, could hire an accountant to do the financial statements. I'm sorry? We're, not, yeah. we're doing yeah, it in lady. Yeah. Yeah. My, yeah, my urging, if I were in your seat, even in the seat I'm in, I, I, think, I think we should set that as our standard, our goal. Yeah. I was just talking to Chris Walker in here that I posted for the control. Yeah. So Chris, uh, do you, when you start your audit, do you read the auditor's report from 2018? Yeah, I, I definitely go through their right. statements, what their findings are. Uh, we, we also uh, tr try to contact them, if we can contact them, and see if there were issues between uh -huh. them and the client. You know, and then I usually will try to read the minutes from the meetings a year prior to, because there's usually there's a lot of stuff that happens in subsequent years that actually was approved in 2018 or 20, in 2017. So you know, I try to read two years worth of minutes prior to the year that I'm auditing, just to get a more of an understanding of what's going on. Now, obviously, if 2018's audit uh, made some uh, suggestions of what we should be doing, and then you determine that we haven't done those, that would be a major... A repeat, a repeat, a repeat, a repeat finding, which basically... Right. These are... The, the first two are, but yeah. they, they had that in the 28th, the credit card uh, the, Okay, good. The, the financial reporting general ledger, which the general ledger still... I, I think the general ledger reports that they can get from the system would be decent reports. Unfortunately, the staff we're working with presented us with Excel reports that were very difficult to follow. Mm -hmm. I, think the system, I think the system That's can. That's already been remedied and we're right. doing all the data you guys are getting now is straight from the system. Good. Okay, so, yeah. and, and that's what we were working with, which was not easy to work with. Hope to improve. And the one finding that I had that I also wrote up was on the, the cafeteria plan that yeah. was in place or was not in place. And obviously there was one at some point in time, but they still haven't been able, they haven't been able to put their hands on it. But in your union contract and the personnel policy, you refer to a cafeteria plan. So I, I talked to our HR per, person that we deal with and she said, well, we can, the easiest thing to do would be to just reissue a new plan, and put, it, put it in place at a certain point in time, and go forward. And the reason why I came across this is I did read about a copy of it in place and reviewing the 941 payroll reports and the W-2s. Typically on the W-2s, the only difference between Line three and five wages and line one wages would be your retirement contributions. 
But that wasn't the case. It was significantly different. So all that. And in digging deeper, I found out that they were including the Caspian withholdings, that basically what the employees pay their portion of the insurance is part of the cafeteria plan. And when that's part of the cafeteria plan, it's not supposed to be subject to Social Security or Medicare tax. Right. <clears throat> While they were taxing it for Social Security and Medicare, but not taxing it for federal income tax purposes, wow. which, which is okay because it's not taxed for federal income tax purposes, but it created basically you're overpaying Social Security and Medicare on, for, on the employee and the employer's share. This has been going on for a long time. Long time. Mm -hmm. You can only get men three years back. He's part of it. They they want them. The, him and his team did a really good job of this. So we can get so we can get a refund on that for H E D and for the rep affected employees. Yeah, and then you just repay it to the, the employee their portion. Of that. How far back do you go? They can only go three years back. Yeah. Right. You know, I made a room as soon as I found out. So yeah, like, so like one of our employees check was. Nineteen dollars and thirty-eight cents. It's not. It's not a huge, huge amount. But all in mind, yeah. over the three-year period, yeah. it's going to be like a sixteen thousand yeah. dollar. So there are two things that have gone on. One is that the payments for the cafeteria plan were accounted for improperly, from from the standpoint of, of social yeah. security and whatnot. But the other thing is that, if I understood the first thing is that nobody can find a copy of the plan. So what is it that people are paying for? Nobody can find a copy of the plan. That's what I thought. Yeah, the cafeteria plan itself, I'm not sure if someone's been able to lay their hands on that. Gotcha, yeah. We, we initiated a plan with the NRECA. It's their plan. I, I'm sure I can access the documents online. Well, we should, because the way this reads is it's, it's just missing in action. Yeah. Which is, a little frightening. I mean, because I, I, I wondered if this was something that, that happened when we switched from the IBEW. No, totally separate. Totally separate, okay. And also, uh, being part of the plan, that plan is supposed to have compliance testing done every year also. So, yeah, typically, if you're so an HR yeah. person that you get, can do that compliance testing for you, but it should be. It so, Lynn, yeah. a possibility for us is for, it sounds like Mike is geared up on each of the topics we've hit and where Christopher's given us a space for management response, we, we could consider yeah. having Mike, you know, for us. It doesn't have to be a, a, a part of the audit, but it could be for us, Mike's response, which is in effect what we're going to do. Well, we already have the contract, is, is, is what I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and that would be the response. Yeah. But, but for each of these items. Yeah. That would be separate. One sentence response is fine. Right. And what, what that does is it, it just it gives you and us in writing. Uh, we were told this yeah. about these shortcomings. This is what we're going to do or have done. And, yeah, I agree. And then a year from now, we can look at it and say, yeah, seems like a, a good opportunity. Because you can refund about $16,000. More than three year period. All of it. Yeah. Total for three years. All of it. Yeah. So it's not a lot. It's not a lot. But it's still no money. For six and that's both HED and the employees total? Yeah. And that would yeah, so somewhere around there. And then make sure it's going to be preparing it properly going forward. Right. A lot of it just hit the like, check the boxes within the software program. And I'm the only one and a half left that looks like well one and a half left you can see I got B is the basically these are manual letter comments which are to me issues with, with some of the reports but not bad enough to be warm enough <laughs> to be put into the Internal control which, 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 B. 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 Okay. So basically one of them was like the, the fixed assets depreciation reports that we were presenting them were pretty difficult to follow for a fixed asset report because there's no there's no date on there as to when 
the fixed asset was purchased. So you basically had to go through and try to see which ones were only had one year of depreciation to determine which ones were current year addition. I don't know if you've seen those reports and yep. they're they're not easy. It's, I think it's part of the system. Maybe it's the report that you've given. I was given, and there might be other reports that there might be something that maybe I can just both look at what's available so we can get a, a report that's going to be more user friendly and easier to read and determine. But it was, took us a while to figure out. Yeah, spreadsheets on spreadsheets on spreadsheets are not good. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the other issue on the second one was accounts payable reconciliations. Uh, what I typically like to do is you, you got a lot of accrued, accrued expenses and withholding accounts like payroll withholdings, Vermont withholdings, Social Security Medicare withholdings, other withholdings, and other accrued expense accounts. But then the way they're working through the system, they set up a payable to pay that accrued expense and it's carrying out that accrued expense off the trial balance and putting it in payable, but really that accrued expense is still owed. So why, I don't know if this, the system can't pay uh, a withholding directly, you have to set it up as a payable. I'm not sure how the system works, but I think it's much easier to read and follow. Because typically what I'll do for testing withholdings, I'll look at what was paid in the following month for Vermont withholdings, Medicare and Social Security, and that should agree with the report. If it doesn't, then it sums off with the balance in the account. And there's a lot of accounts that were, hadn't been cleared out for, for quite a few years. I finally, in 2019, I said, those balances are no longer there. Why haven't they? So we cleaned, cleaned up most of them on a budget in 2019. So I said, technically, you should zero out every month. Whatever was withheld in 20, or what withheld in December, would be paid in January, and you should agree with your balance at the end of December. But there's also some accrued expenses that are being set up as paid through the payable system, and zeroing out the accrued expenses. Set and still being, and being included in payables. Right. It should, to me, I would just leave it in crude expense until the day that you pay it, and then you figure it out right then. And it won't be in, but it's, it's, that's pretty confusing to, to follow, too. Sounds reasonable. Neither the guy in the quiet manner that I was explaining to you. Yeah. And then the other thing that I, ended up adjusting for in 2019 is the as part of the your contracts and personnel policy of uh, you get a basically a retirement amount when they turn if they actually retire from our production department based on your years of service and if you have so to me, that's a liability that should be mm -hmm. at least sure. disclosed mm -hmm. and reported on. So, we, so I, like, you and I never talked to that at about that, but that is so old. That was the retirement from our back in the day. That was it. That's not now. Before the days of the pension, yeah. that, that's how old that was, but it's still in there. And Does it we'll apply to anybody? Oh, yeah. Everybody. It applies to everybody. everybody. Whoever retired in I think retired is not, retired, yes. not, not uh, is forced to leave or leaves on their own without retiring. They don't receive it, but when you have one that's been there 44 years, and this is probably going to be a significant amount. Yep. Is this a one-time thing or is this a one-time one 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 thing? Time. And so actually, what? it was 48 years today. Wow. Woo. It's Brian. 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 Wow. Oh, yeah, so 48 years? 48 years. <laughs> so I set that up in the 2019, and actually it went down from 2019 to 2020. Huh. 
from yeah. people leaving that yeah. aren't didn't retire. And I think there was one person that did retire. And she yeah. would probably receive that payment too. So it actually went, the liability actually went down from 2019 to 2020. So we just should have a, an item that acknowledges well, this liability. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds reasonable. I don't know how you do it, but complicated system. The other one is this. It's easy enough to call it. No, numbers. Item C is just like another can got can report required by the government accounting standards board's calls it the government's letter, which basically address what we did during the audit to the people charged in the governance of the department. And we didn't have any, and if there's any difficulties to encounter, there wasn't any real difficulties to encounter that we could Good. dispose, we dispose what different estimates that are required to make and an estimate for us is depreciation expense is actually an estimate. You're estimating the useful, maybe useful life of your equipment and transformers and everything else. And then the pension liability is a, a huge estimate. So, so we expose that fact. Other than that, we didn't have any uncorrected misstatements. We, we put all the government entries, they agreed to all the government entries that we submitted. Uh, we had no disagreements with management. Uh, no management consultations with other independent accountants. Although I did talk to uh, who was the accountant, a prior, prior auditor down. Graham. Graham. Talking in just to find out about the yeah the carrier and he said yeah I do remember there one being in place and that's all I got out of. Uh, no other audit, audit findings or issues that I disclosed. Um, other than that, that's the basic. So let me ask you this, Chris. You know, you did a Gatsby audit. Yeah. So what would like the next level into the weeds audit be? What would that look like and what would include that we don't do right now? Uh, Gatsby audit's going to go through all your accounts. You know, the other, uh, other things that you can do out there is called the agreed upon procedures. We say we'll do whatever you want us to do. We want you to look at our receivables in depth, you know, for this period, this period, this period. And we go through the whole detail. We go through different items that you talk, ask us, you want us to do. That's that's not an audit. It's just basically called agreed upon procedures. Mm -hmm. We agree upon what you so want us are, to do. Are there any of those that are, you know, pretty common? Some of them do, we've done agreed upon procedures for some municipalities. Some usually it's when they feel something, they don't feel comfortable. Something mm -hmm. else. They go in, we feel we will check and they'll say they're going to test 75 receipts, 25 from March, 25 from right. June, whatever. What about internal controls? Um, I mean, we, we do have internal controls. Um, <laughs> We learned from past experience. But I wondered, is, is that something that should be audited or reviewed periodically? And if so, with what kind of frequency? Um, uh, I, I don't see it done too often, only because that only if they have a really major concern with their controls. Uh, come in and review the system. I personally have done that I'm, I'm one, sorry. I pers personally, I haven't done one for quite a few years. And I'd probably just recommend somebody else to do it. Plus, uh, you know, I'd rather. I, I guess my question. When you're doing these audits, you're trying to be independent from the audit and from other things. Well, like the, re the reason I'm asking is that I think we, I think we together, 
he, you know, even after these reports, we're like, well, are we, are we doing everything we need to be doing? Yeah. And I think that's what I'm looking to hear. Are we doing everything we need to be doing or not? Because if we're not, we want to do it. Well, the major thing is doing the audit, you know, if you feel, if you don't feel comfortable with the audit and you want to have more things done, you can do these agreed upon procedures. But we don't know what procedures may that's what I mean. are, are right. that we might want. I mean, my takeaway from this is that we should be doing our own financial statements, and then those should be audited rather than having the auditor do the financial statements. And that we need to do a management report, and you're going to send us some templates or samples yeah. of those kinds of things. I mean, that's. But you're not observing uh, any major deficiencies. And no, no, we're our controls gonna, appear to be okay. Yeah, we, uh, we reviewed numerous months of bank reconciliations and see, we see the initial people, someone who prepares it, someone who reviews it. Well, the main thing is getting the bank reconciliations done timely and having you know, the person who prepares it initial, the person who reviews it initial. The, Make sure the person who reviews it is someone pretty much independent of the whole process. That way, it's well. We we can we can talk about this right morning, but I think that's really what we're looking for. Is are we doing what we need to be doing? And yeah. I think I'm hearing you say yes. Yeah. Well, we're also going to have. If I can just get two different reports. Oh, I absolutely. <laughs> and I, you know, uh, I think if you're joining us again next year, which I hope you do. Uh, you're going to find things much better than we are this And we're, we're clearing up a lot of the stuff now and getting it set up. And I can, I can give you our, some of our, our schedules that we have also. So okay. As far as the debt and how that's going to hash out over time. And, And I do have that, that crew retirement. I have that set up too. Okay. In a temp, in basically, an Excel template that just rolls off from the, uh, the crew vacation and sick time. It's added three columns. There. And basically, it's going to add one more year every year to the. Perfect. Yeah. Obviously, Chris, because we had our embezzlement 10 years ago, we're very self conscious. Yes. Right. And we want to be. We want to be sure that you're doing everything you can do to inform us how we can do it better. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm glad that you are because there are, there are some <laughs> towns out there. I just got a request for a proposal from a town. They want me to audit three years. And I say, well, what you're asking me to do, they had it in their audit proposal. I said, this sounds like more like a grid upon procedure. You want me to do all this stuff? I said, it doesn't sound like an audit. It sounds like you want me to go in there. Prepare it for you. I finally called them up. I said, "Wow, well, we already had so many audibles for you, but we just want to have it audited again." I said, "Why?" I said, "Sound like you want something. You want to find out. They they aren't weren't comfortable with the numbers, but they wanted to find out if there's something wrong." So, "Well, it sounded like we need to read upon procedures, not an audit." I told them that about five times. And sent out a new RFP. Didn't change it any. <laughs> Sounds like one to not do. Yes, exactly yeah. what I told my managing partner. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, yeah. we'll get a copy of the um, of the twenty nineteen. So he'll give us real I'll, ones. Yeah, I'll give you. I, I got some. I got some ticky ticky yeah. footy changes that I'll make, and I'll give you. I'll send you five pound ones. Well, I'll send him a digital copy. The bad ones, I'm not sure. My office manager has been out for two weeks with a ankle issue, and you can't put any weight on it. And hopefully, I'll find out this week when it should be back soon. Well, it's not going to work great for now. I got people chomping a bit for you, so. Okay. Well, I'll have it for you. I'll have it for you tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, no problem. So, what I think I need from you guys is the approvals. So. Yep. I can disperse them after, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, which I think we do once there's a final after report. You say yes, yeah. 
Yeah, and then if you can just re respond to the internal control things, yep. Yep. once I get those responses, I'll add it to that. Right. Right. Good. Okay. Do you need questions? anything from me? No, no. You're set. So I think it's, it's yeah, so on those responses, if you can put something together and just send it to all of us, we can Great. take a look at it and get that to Chris. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, we've had other reports which have uh, nice. sent me to sleep, so you, you've done a good job. It's nice to meet you in person. It's always nice to get a <coughs> yeah, face with the person sending emails. Well, uh, we really appreciate working with you, my staff. I do have one for you. I have to get you a copy of that plan. Yeah. Yeah. Because we sued another auditor that didn't make you too nervous. <laughs> you did what? <laughs> That's my competitor across the street. <laughs> 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 as long as all my day. All right. Thanks, Jen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. I should think it would make you nervous. <laughs> Well, we have internal controls now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was an order they, coming in. They did early. They did yeah. Early, uh, yeah. 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 Uh, highlighted some stuff that we weren't even aware of, so it was pretty right. good. Yeah. And uh, the uh, cafeteria plan debacle was created by the auditor back then, verbatim. We were doing it just the way we were told. So. Hey. It's 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 fixed now, so we're fine. What's that audit cost about? Uh, so they gave me a proposal for uh, twenty-five thousand uh, dollars for the twenty nineteen. No, twenty yeah, twenty nineteen. Right? And I said. Uh, with all the other two. I said, how about we do this? How about we do two years for 45? Because the second year is going to be easier than the first year. And they said, okay. So, very fair right now. So next year will be 15,000. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's proposal only. No. But it'll probably be uh, less time than work because everything will be right in the system. Right. But that's okay. We'll cross that bridge. I've got to do it. So the next item, on, did anybody have else want to talk about anything else with respect to the auditor's report? If not, mm -hmm. we move on to H11. Um, I, had, I had corresponded with Mike. It, it, it just strikes me that, you know, somebody, I don't even remember who it was, Recently, said something to me again about how long H11 had. I think it was. Uh, I think it was was Eric, but I'm not sure how long it had, H11 had been going on for. And because I think I had mentioned that it was getting close to going into operation, and it occurred to me that it would be nice to have some kind of a ribbon cutting, something. Sure. I mean, it's really a question of what what Encore <coughs> wants to do. It's their project. We're we're the customer. Um, and, and I don't know if they have any interest in having some kind of an open house or something where people could, I, don't, I think mo a lot of people haven't seen that kind, that I, kind I of, a, love it. Of, a, of a solar project and that's something we could certainly, you know, help publicize if they would like yep. us to, to do that. Um, but I think it would be good for them and I think it would be good for us and it would be good for our customers. Sure. Um, the only negative is that some hackers might see, oh, this is where it is, and this is where the gate is. And, I mean, there, there's a certain advantage of them not knowing where it is, even though Mike has a new gate and he has you know, cameras. They're and, all new gates, and yeah. they're all locked, and video surveillance. And but otherwise, yeah. It's great advertising for a good project. I think we should. So, I think we should, in spite yeah. of what I said. I mean, I don't think so we... I'll kick off a chat with Chad and Encore, and uh, so you saw my email I got from Kate. They're postponed because another month, yeah. Year. So you have a little time to plan. Because uh, you had expected it to be this for next week or next week. We were going to energize tomorrow, and we we're going to be online next week, but uh, 
Uh, it seems so. It seems so wasteful. Yeah. You know that everybody involved would benefit. I know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's something about the timing of you know now you own it we, and this changes and insurance is now your problem. It's they all just had to bring it. It's like a closing on a property yes. sale. It's, yeah. it's some. Uh, yeah, I was when I saw the email. I was trying to read between the lines to figure out what oh. yeah, could have gone on. But, I mean, typically there are a lot of conditions precedent that have to be yeah. uh, satisfied, and uh, you know, I don't know what. Nice what's sunny, it causing the glitch? Nice sunny days, and yeah. it, 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 those thousands of panels are sitting there not doing anything. Yeah, they, they essentially they got down a month early. They built it four weeks quicker than they were expecting. Well, she said that they need power. They need power. So, so we've got to. So they have to buy it from us. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a it's a bi-directional circuit. Right, it's but no so 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 they go on a commercial rate or something. Yep, I would guess. They, we can supply them power, no problem. Uh -huh. They're going to do all their positioning and testing. And I have to <laughs> right, no, I know I there's no problem getting it to them, but I mean, they're fine Jeez. with the note, because the, the PPA didn't say anything about us having. Sometimes there are PPAs where it says the, the off taker has the obligation to provide power no, to the no, project during, during construction or something like that. No. Thousands of kilowatt hours and per day. And the test energy presumably is coming out. Uh, no, all they do, they lock out and tag out all the inverters okay. and test off the solar power, the way I understand it. So the transformer and the switch gear will be there for them to commission, which will be energized from us. And then their inverters and all the protection schemes will be energized from the other end, which is all DCs, but they won't tie them together. Okay, but in terms of, of, of being, of operating in sync, that, that won't happen until next month. That's we, we okay, control so everything. They're, so, so they're, they're an island at this point. Yes, okay. that's where we're going. Because we're all ready to go. We'll go look at that. Yes, cool. You can say The photograph in your package is just I have to yeah. up the bucket. absolutely stunning. Yeah. Okay. You had to what, Mike? I grew up with a bucket truck. So oh, is that how they got up, Mike? Right? Yeah. Okay. It's great looking. So, it sounds like we have segued to the general manager's report. Okay. Uh, so, if anyone has any questions or comments, I you know the area that I would that I love to hear Mike talk about a little more of just to what degree should we be concerned about the the concrete situation. And, and where where it's winding winding up, you know, it yeah. obviously was a process of discovery. It was it was worse than you thought, but then you found a way to deal with it and sort of give us a little more color. I thought your write up was great, but yeah. is there anything you didn't have in your write up that can help us understand it better? Well, um, I actually was buried today. I wanted to get down there and have another site visit with the contractor, but I didn't have time. So this is really what I know at the moment. Um, the, the real kind of scare that we were having about chipping away at this thing and falling over, uh, I don't know if I explained it well in there or not, but there was the parts of the foundation they were working on are the exterior. And the exterior portions are really bad. Exterior concrete. <clears throat> Nip, Matt came with me a little bit. Yeah. And they're when they were doing their investigations and the test uh, bores and stuff, they realized and, and actually crawled down between the ten, ten stocks up in there and found that the center core of this 20 foot by 20 foot foundation is actually a solid block right underneath the center of the tower. And it's structurally good, no soft incident at all. So I think what happened was the builders in 1937 really built that portion of the foundation and said there this will hold it up now we just got to dress up the outsides which is really what the outsides amounts to it's not holding weight um, it's not holding that much weight no all oh. the weight's going to be on that center huh. and <clears throat> so what they're doing now is getting rid of all the soft stuff they're going to uh, 
the engineers are setting it up to put uh, all the reinforcing steel in that there is zero of right now in that thing. So it's going to be three times the foundation it ever was before. Um, and we didn't have to redesign it because it's got 90 years of history saying, hey, this, this works. So. <clears throat> and what's the, uh, and the cost? This is all change orders as you go. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we, we, the original plan is four to six inches of removals, and we're going to be 12 to 14, so it's going to be probably two or three weeks extra labor and chipping, and, but it's not like a redesign and we have to change plans and the cost is going to double. Um, but yeah, it's going to be more than. So, if you were to guess now at the high side of the worst case, still going to be dollars. under 100. And, okay. and that includes the lost generation? No. No. So we have that also. That, Sean factored that stuff into his short, Original. short buys starting. Well, oh yeah, no, no, but, I, but there's an opportunity cost for yes, it. Yes, absolutely, yeah. So I have not included that, but I can, I can put a number in there for that one. But when we went down there that day, <laughs> that Friday, uh, Mike fearing the worst case scenario about the concrete, he had a plan for lifting up or removing the whole uh, 60 foot high structure and putting in some I-beams to hold the whole thing up. And that was going to cost, you thought, upwards of 100,000. Yeah. Uh, so it was really good news when the concrete yeah, people really said, uh, it's not that bad after all. Yeah. But I mean, we, you would, if you think about how you remove a tower of that height, you don't want to lie it down, it might flatten. And there are a lot of, 35,000 volt wires all over the right place. There. And they, oh man, get out of here. So it's great news that they yeah, could fix really it. Good. Is that the highest point for anything around? What do you think? It's as high as the. No. 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 All, it, all that thing does is uh, keeps the hydraulic just, forces off the turbine that's great. when it shuts down. But in terms of like trees or buildings or any acres beyond, it's only it's double that. It's only 60 feet high and it's way down in the hole on the wall. Okay. It's really nice that we don't see it. There's one of the lights in the test. Nope. Nobody can see so, it. So there's anywhere. no risk then to that center core. It's, it's, no, it's not solid. It's not, it's not going to be the next thing to deteriorate. No. no. Uh, one thing though I didn't talk about is the when they were chipping away all the old concrete and they exposed those two manholes, nobody ever even knew they were there. <laughs> <laughs> They've been under 15 to 20 inches of concrete since 1937. And another thing that you did is have this young buck engineer uh, tasked with his fancy machine, the thickness of the steel all around this great tower. And of course he had to use a bucket truck to get up there and test it. So he got a map of the thickness of the steel because over the years, the steel guy had had to uh, put patches all over the place. And we actually identified a section that needs a patch. So it was kind of very good rec recognizance. That's, what you mean by That's one of the main holes they have covered. Yeah. So where does it go to? It goes into the base of the, the penstock okay. structure right there. Yeah. But nobody could get into it because it was covered with concrete. Yeah. Okay. Why would you want to get in there to clean it out if it was sure, clean it out, yeah. maintenance, pull part, put parts in and out to work on the unit because before, I don't know if you remember, but some years ago I had the access holes put into the top of tubes, 40 inch manholes that we can unbolt and get down in here. <clears throat> so if you, before that, all we had was this little hatchway Remember down in the hole, there was that square hole in the concrete, you have to go down like nine feet, and then go in the hole to get in the turbine, and I said, no, we're not going in there anymore, because if somebody gets hurt, you can't get them out. So are you going to extend this in some way, or keep it? No, no. The, uh, I, the, en the engineers asked what we wanted to do, and I said, well, what are the options? And he said, well, we can bury it, we can do this, we can do that. And I said, well, why wouldn't we want to form around it, keep them accessible, for possible future use or anything there. And he was adamantly against it and said, no, if we change that foundation design at all, then we'd have to redesign it. So we okay. have to put it back the same and we don't and we don't have to do any design work. And I said, okay, sounds good to me. So it's going to 
going to get buried again. And all of this is on the water, the, the system that gets the water to the turbine. And the turbine is all taken apart right now because you've got all kinds of turbine problems. No, that's all back together, ready to go. Jeez. God, dude, this hoist. Holy, how many tons of turbine up in the 12 air? Ton. Yeah. 12 tons. Jeez. I had a question about the road to the warehouse. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> I, I guess I understood what you were saying about the yellow line and putting in a road to, to carry road. But there, there is, I forget that I'm terrible on road things. Okay. Um, yeah. There is this road which is coming off. An air drive, that's a private yeah. road. So is there some reason that we can't use that road rather it's a than private the private road? Oh, it's a private road. No, and the end of that road ends before it gets to our property. So it goes to that guy's. It looks house. like there's a road right through there, but that's only because the neighbor comes through our yard to get to his backyard all the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> But yeah, there's no road there. Okay. But if you drive down there, you'll see that bridge has got holes in it. And you could, a small child could fall through that bridge. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, it's crazy. So I was is, down is there, there anything we... blocking it off to nope. stop that? Nope. No, we have no idea. But it's a, town, it's a town's bridge? No. No, the town says it's not there. Is what? Down says it's not there. We think it's our bridge. Well, I mean, I, it seems to me that it if goes, someone could get hurt there, we we ought to be blocking all access. I'm sure that's access. Mike's plan. As soon as his driveway is in, there's going to be a load of fill yeah. or something right in front of it. I mean, is there some way that we could pay whoever owns the private road? At least a temp temporarily, so that we can access that till you can well, build the other there, road. There's, yeah, there's multiple moving parts here. Right. That, that's one of the pieces of the puzzle. Uh, I met with the earth movers today about going on the yellow line. And as you leave the substation yard and head towards Carey Road, uh, right at Carey Road is about 18 feet higher than grade. I, I, so it's which is good as far as getting out of the floodplain, but. They estimated on, on a back of a napkin today, it's like 1,900 yards of material, which would be 190 dump trucks just to fill a hole in it. I'm like, no, that doesn't sound like a good option. So I'm circling back to either something on an air drive, which uh, appeals to me because we also have our own septic system out back that a couple times in the winter has frozen up, which has been a real pain in the behind. So our nearest access to the town sewer is on an air drive. So I might be able to work and deal with that guy because um, his whole backyard that's fenced in where his dogs and his kids play it is our property. So it's our be, property, so we should be able to maybe swap something. We should be able to something. make a swap and make everybody happy. And, but I have gotten that far. Okay. But I, I think I think if there's a you know if there's a, something dangerous and we know about no, it, it's not that big. It's yeah, yeah, why? Yeah, but I can plank it off for an hour or something. Temporary. Dude, we need yeah. you know it just. It's a peculiar because it's the driveway for this other for us, but it's also the driveway to get into this guy's house. Well, so has no rights. To you think that the town would want to fix so. fix it? That's another part of the problem that's still being figured out. How will that get figured out? Well, we're, if they don't have an easement, they'll either have to get one from us or find another route to their property. But if we're going to use the neighbor's road, he's got to get the easement from the neighbor. And us. And both. <laughs> right. Which we don't want to do because we are. We're gated off out there because people come in and steal stuff. So we well, Mike's got some long. Mike's got long-term dreams for yes, mo moving all of this stuff to a different place out of the floodplain. Well, that's something we should be. Yes, I've already picked a spot. Well, it's that's something we should be talking about. Yeah. Um, the. Um, yeah, I mean this this property wasn't something that we wanted and chose and we're doing cartwheels about. We ended up with it because 
Green Mountain Power didn't want to do business in Hardwood, and Hardwood Village ended up with it. So it wasn't a prime piece of property that was serving our needs. We just kind of ended up with it. Yeah. When was that? That was in 47. And then they built a warehouse that's there now, I think in 69 or 70. I, I was looking at the, does anybody have any other <clears throat> questions? I, I had some on the key indicator summary. When I was- Where are you? On what summary? The first page after the orange. The key yep. indicator summary. Orange. I'm not colorblind, good. And when it, when it says under expenses, distribution O&M, Then when I look on the next page, and the 436,000 and change is listed as total O and M, so it's not just distribution O and M. There's something in the labeling that just seems okay. off. Yeah, and then this, this sheet here, the first sheet, yeah. is not out of the system. Yeah, they're building this to try and give you guys the same package we've always had. So yeah. you see structures that are the same, but if we see something we don't like or something that's raising Well, it just, it just struck me yeah. that, 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 was, that that was, you know, there, there are two numbers that are identical that have different labels on them. And, and then it was unclear to me whether that, you know, A and G is listed separately. But on, on, on the next page, it, it appears to be included in the total O&M expense, but it doesn't look like it is yeah. on, on the key indicator summary. Can you do me a big favor? Yeah. Send me an email with those two. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure. And then I'll, I'll get them straightened out and answered. Am I right in saying that almost all of these papers that we look at every month will have in the past been put together by uh, Jess. Yeah. And in the future will be done by the new Jess. In the future will be done either by, uh, well, one of the two regular employees in the GA side of the business, but they'll be pulled straight out of the system. Okay. They won't, they won't have to build them. Right. I, I'm not done with my questions. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so then at the bottom it says total funds receivable. But it, if you take that and you add it to the cash on hand in the beginning and then take out the funds that are dispersed, you get the current cash on hand end of the month. So that looks to me like it's total funds received, not receivable. That is correct. So it, I, is I don't receiving. know if it, you know, it just. Listen to you. <laughs> well, you're right. It just. Good, good catch, Lynn. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, and I don't know if we want to get into a discussion of the number on the bottom of the page, but it is a large number for what it is. Yeah. And we are earning next to nothing on it. I think we should, I think we should, um, yeah. my suggestion for you to consider then would be have a future meeting, maybe the very next meeting. Where we make that the focus of the meeting. I Mike comes in prepared with his. I think that's an excellent idea. His recommendations. Idea. It's like a maintenance building. I can. Uh, <laughs> I can. Yeah. Uh, and now that's one of them. Yeah. I wouldn't even have thought of that before. Yeah. Yeah. Would you say, Michael? Looks like a new maintenance building. Oh. <laughs> Get rid of the bridge and the problem with the neighbor right. and that'd be wonderful. And the water. Well, I, I. Yeah. I think. I think. It, I think it's also part of the discussion on what we're doing post-settlement. Yeah. yeah, right, that's what I meant. Well, uses of uses of cash. Yeah. The highest uses. Highest and best Highest uses. and best uses of the cash. So. Yeah, you so, would ask me, you would all ask me sometime to make a list, so I yeah. did, but I haven't and I, and, and honestly, I think, you know, there's, there's projects, there's, uh, there's pay down of debt. You know, the 
it should be all those things. Yeah. So then maybe included in that is the pluses and minuses of the existing uh, maintenance building, shed, whatever you call it. As one of the projects. Sure. That'll be on the roof. And we've got to keep in the view the metering, even though, you know, we're struggling with that. The what? Metering. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's it. Oh, I got my first piece of paper today as a net metering person. I got to come in, man. I can't understand a word of that paper. <laughs> oh, okay. Jeez, is it confusing. Well, it's a little harder than well, usual. You know what that means? That means you should get ready to get solar. No. no. <laughs> so I'm, I'm assuming Mike didn't talk you into that. No, he did not. He called me a trigger. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Even though you recommended the well, solar guide. To I'm do it. sympathetic. I've been I've been looking at those monthly statements now for several years. Yeah. And sometimes I understand them, and sometimes I don't. It depends <laughs> on my mood. Yeah. Well, yeah. this one's harder than usual because it includes two months. My first oh, month, okay. which is all screwed up. So I know that. So that's that, that's his backup excuse for everything. This, this should not be. This, if, if you folks are having trouble understanding it. Well, I know I, Tim I, Nisbet does too. He, yeah. he, he can't understand his. Well, Mike, that might be a worthwhile thing for us to look at, you know, without overly investing. But it shouldn't be that hard. Are there ways you could we could label and explain it? Or, I, I'm open to uh, it's a little tricky. discussing and suggestions. I think that as the newest... Uh, yeah, why don't we As the newest the recipient, he should take That's charge of the project. <laughs> I have a new way of looking at that. <laughs> the reason she says it's optimism is because you're so damn old, you'll never get the money back. So a friend of mine... I've been mean, thinking about that. So right. Okay, here's the way you look at it. Exactly right. if, if you can afford for the initial, to pay the initial expense and put this in before you get your 26% you know, back from the feds, on the cost, which you do as a credit the following year on your federal income tax, <laughs> that means you you've got some spare cash. My friend Hugh Knox is, is thinking about doing. These, he's about the same age. I said you'll never get your money back. You know, ten or twelve years. He said I look at it this way. This is money that otherwise would be going to my children as some of their inheritance, and this way I get to spend their inheritance. <laughs> You're not buying new shoes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not, I, can, I can still pay for the milk. And, you know, and, new golf clubs. New go yeah, I just broke one. <laughs> I don't know. So, yeah. So, this is terrific. You know, it's, it's I don't know what this is on our agenda, but I think it has to do with aging. And I don't no, know. it's net metering. It's <laughs> he says, do your net metering. It's okay. The heck with Mike. The heck with Hardwick Electric. Yeah. My bill was twenty six dollars. I think, I think we got to this from uh, talking about <laughs> it was yeah. Matt's fault. <laughs> right. Talking about the form, which I couldn't understand. I paid twenty six dollars. Okay. So this is under new business. Oh. Nat's new business. Nat's new nope. business. <laughs> and no, but I think I think I think I I I, I said is, it jokingly, it but yeah. but yeah. There is but an our bills should be. It's a supreme effort in a form for that's me to comprehensible, figure it out. and if we have. Two yeah. people with advanced degrees yeah. who are yep. having difficulty understanding them. And I know a third who's a you know, local businessman who you think would understand it too, and he got he thinks it's screwed up, and maybe he is. Yeah, well, let's, let's sit down and look. No, I, I've, every time I've really worked at it, I've, I've, I've reassured myself that it's proper, it's accurate. It's just confusing in the way. How come you can't confusing. remember from month to month? But you shouldn't have because to. Because really, it's that confusing. <laughs> but you shouldn't have to really work yeah. at it. You should be able to look at it and say, oh, I agree. okay. Hey, I'm, I'm all Thanks. for it. I'm glad Nat raised the issue and complained. No, no. I, so I, you're going you're gonna to be the guinea pig. Okay, I'm going to walk through. And I'll, I'll, I'll be your I'll assistant. I'm also going to provide you all with right. one. So we can look at it together. And yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get copies of mine. I will be your assistant. You. Okay. Okay. I can put on my old red design hat and build formatting. I used to do that. Yeah, a long time ago. Um, is there any other new business? Yeah, I have a question about the power. Oh, okay. the, you know, the, the cost per energy last month was really 20% less than yeah. you budgeted, which is amazing. Is that, why was it so low? <laughs> The unit cost. I mean, I see the summary here. The summary is there. Yeah, usually the bullets are explained right there on the second. That's the page. 
because it says market energy was 50 percent higher than budget yeah, energy but prices but total loads were two percent higher uh, uh, yeah but, but the, then we had cost decreases which yeah there was there was some quite amazing right cost the big thing was that costs were 52 percent higher and we were budgeted for 115 percent coverage so we had 15% oh. to sell oh, okay. with a 52% higher market. So we were in a great position to be over covered. And there were cost savings. I mean, transmission costs were, were, yeah. were lower. Was it, wasn't, it, wasn't it really the McNeil costs, though, that brought that, that and Seabrook PPA? That resulted in, in the transmission was twenty seven grand under, and the net resources was thirty almost thirty two. Yeah, so I mean they were both way down. Yeah. And on the but on the net resources, if I re understood your notes, it was Billings Road, which was in the budget for June. Because otherwise that statement doesn't make any sense. So I assume that, that there was money for, for Billings Road in there. And that was more, that, so effectively we had a, a cost decrease. Yeah, yeah. Um, that McNeil's fuel costs were lower. And that we were doing better with the Seabrook PPA. There was, there was a, a cornucopia of good. Yeah. How do we do better with Seabrook? I mean, I thought that was all fixed. Costs. Apparently not. Yeah, but the recs change every month. Are the recs changed? The recs, yeah, they change. Uh, there's that much involved. Huh. Okay. We still haven't signed a new deal with Seabrook. On the other chunk, the other half of the Seabrook is not done yet. Yeah. No. Well, like Sean was saying at the last meeting, I mean, called in there they're targeting that one to three year purchase right now and tailoring those to, to each BEPSA member. So that's their focus, this one to three year purchase. We'll see what they can do. Okay. I just get answer you want to do it. Uh, well maybe just a general a quick general question. So our deal with all the different BEPSA who have we going to leave for <clears throat> There's a certain amount of kilowatt hours per month. That's that's, that's how we. They do, want, or is it a demand factor? It, it's whatever the the projected that's the projected budget needs are for us, and they go procure the energy capacity. Okay, so the VEPSA says you need a uh, hundred hundred kilowatt hours this month. Yeah. And we only use ninety kilowatt hours. Mm -hmm. We pay for hundred. No. No. We only pay for ninety. We pay for 90, and then the, ten, the other 10, we sell. We go back to the market, and if we paid a little bit, and the market's really high, we buy the difference. If okay. we pay a whole lot, and the market's low, we lose. Yeah. Okay. That's why we try and end up 100% coverage on that. 95 to 105 is our target. Okay. But and what we're purchasing spot. That's a day-to-day -day purchase. Yeah. In other words, up. because because Vexa doesn't have a perfect crystal ball as right. to how much we're going to going to use, and so there's a certain amount that's purchased on an hour by hour right. basis, and and it's real time. It gets metered at, and and we're either plus or or, right. or not. I mean, it's not so. So when we're over, we're buying the market. Yeah. We're under. We're trying to sell. To we're trying to okay. sell to the market. Right. That, that was a, which was one of the things that saved us money this month. Is yeah. we, we had more power than we needed, so we could sell it back in a price that was high. Sometimes you lose on that deal. Right. Yeah. Right. right. We want to be conservative. That's where our own goes pretty tight. It used to be 85 to 150. Yeah, we pushed it up. Way too much risk there. Yeah. Know. But BEPSA functions as our system dispatcher. Yeah. Yeah. So. Any other? Oh, questions? one other thing. We're on new business or whatever. We're on new business, business yes. So uh, 
I told you about a potential new customer coming on with a really huge lighting load, remember? We yeah. have a yep. in there today. What, I'm sorry, with a huge, huge lighting? Huge lighting load, amongst other things. Okay. And uh, we had a site meeting there today, and that looks like that project is a go. Is, is a go? Is a go. Route 15 on the right tomorrow? Yep. Yep. That's so that's going to be just. That'll be our biggest customer. And that's just going to be lighting? No, it's a facility. <laughs> it's growing all up. All indoor facility. And, and where is it exactly? Right across the road from the last one. On the way towards Walcott on Route 15. Yeah. Yeah. To the right of uh, all metals. Yep. To the right. Oh. Hempy. Oh, where where the where the farm stand used to be. Mm. Was. No, there's but a that's big. Just, where all metals is. I know exactly. Yeah. Where and I know where all the stuff is grown. It's where they're growing it all. Where oh. you know. No, the no, they're growing it on the left, and those guys boil. It. That's a different one. So on the right is a is a gravel pit. Yeah, yep. it's up behind there. Okay. Yeah, but, but, but. Boy, that's really great so news. It's, so it's heading up it's towards what? West Hill. Really great news. That's so our, 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 awesome. our top two customers are one growing marijuana and the other one boiling hemp. No, they're both doing hemp. Okay. <laughs> um, so, so, so that's, that, that will improve our, our, um, our load shape. It. it makes up for me. Yes. Just get with it. It's a new world. <laughs> and there's <laughs> So yeah, I'm interested yes, to see, but uh, they had a they had a proposal or they had a request in for a circuit that would have gone underground from Route 15 all the way up there, and uh, so I proposed that we build an underbuilt circuit on our new transmission line we just built, and, uh, which is going to be for them and us, and it's going to cost about uh, 28. $25,000 less than what they wanted, so they were pretty excited for that. That's great. Because that transmission line is to the north of Route 15. Yep. Right. Spectacular. And that's tax base for the town as well. Yep. All good. Yep. Are they doing any natural daylighting or 100% enclosed lighting? I'm not sure. The, uh, they have 285 kW <laughs> of just lighting. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> That's no water pumps, no nothing. Just like it. Jasper Hill is now a distant third. Yeah, once they put their solar, it won't be a distant <laughs> right. or something. Right. Yeah, they're starting to like huge solar themselves. Um. Well, we have to look for more hemp then. <laughs> <laughs> that's, no, that's great. That's great. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure how many jobs they're going to create, but I would guess 10 or 12 full-time jobs. Wow. Yeah, do, do they have people who will take them, though? Yeah, well, that's, that's <laughs> cool. true. What are the perks? Free product. Yeah, I don't know. What <laughs> <laughs> product you think of? Good. Any, <laughs> any, uh. any other new business? It is... 658. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? Second. Any objection? Hearing none, we are adjourned at 658. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, I pressed the button, but I didn't do it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. No, I didn't. No, Obviously, I, he's the one that was playing. I don't know how to do it. I, I pressed it. You're in charge.